Um, so I am very happy to introduce the congressman for the off in the office of the Midwest High Speed Rail Association uh, and a member of the Transportation and Housing and Urban De Development Committee, uh, Representative Mike Quigley. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Um, it's interesting we talk at this time. What's the expression, may you live in interesting times? I would much rather live in really boring set times. Than boring is good. This is, this, this is not interesting. This is some sort of, I'm waiting for someone to cue the Three Stooges music, chaos. Uh, and you say, why do you say that? Well, I'm also, uh, in addition to be, uh, being on the Appropriations Committee, I'm on the House Select Committee on Intelligence. So uh, sp spending 30, 40 hours a week investigating some of uh, the most unique aspects of what has taken place in the last I don't know, since Watergate, perhaps, right? Put, you, put it in perspective. The problem for all of you is, it, depends, it doesn't really matter which group I'm talking to today, we are horrifically distracted and polarized as a country. And a lot of the issues that you care about are being blown off the front pages, or even serious thought, because we're talking about two or three other issues, right? Um, the health care issue, obviously, the Russian investigation, obviously, and then sort of all the other circus elements of what's taking place right now. So uh, when I spoke to an environmental group earlier this week, I said, you guys aren't getting traction, even though you're probably the worst assault on the environment since you know the early 80s from a White House administration, because people are focused on everything else. So I, what am I to tell you about high-speed rail? What, my message today is we've got to get the public focused on other issues because the challenges are extraordinary right now. Um, it's interesting. It comes to mind, President Obama said, uh, this is the first generation to feel the effects of climate change and perhaps the last generation that can do anything about it. Uh, so we're going the opposite direction. When I think about high-speed rail, I think about infrastructure, I think about transportation, maybe this is infrastructure, the bipartisan issue that can work. But it seems that even when you only thoughtfully need one side of the aisle to get something done, like the health care law, it wasn't able to take place. So I'm not sure that's true. When I hear the secretary say that well, we were thinking about spending a trillion, but that's a lot of money. And I heard the president say, turns out Republicans don't want to spend a lot of money on infrastructure or transportation. And then my chairman on appropriations uh, said, well, Chairman Rogers said this three years ago. He said, uh, there's so little money for transportation in this country, we've got to spend it on the things that are really important, just roads and bridges. <laughs> So you know, I reminded him that uh, uh, more people take the Chicago Transit Authority than Amtrak, right? This gives us high speed local rail and so forth, not the same as what we were talking about. But more people take the CTA in a month than ride Amtrak in a year. It's extraordinary. 34 million riders in Amtrak, which is a lot. I love Amtrak. Um, a few years ago, I was injured playing hockey, and I had to take, didn't have to, but I couldn't fly, and I had to go to D.C. on Amtrak. 19 hours. 19 hours, and uh, I, I was trying to think how many times I could have gone back and forth, and what a shame it was. And you begin to see what the problems are. I had someone tell me when they first briefed me on high-speed rail, Congressman, to have high-speed rail, you've got to get rid of low-speed rail. And uh, I've repeated that line, and people thought, well, that's a stupid thing to say, of course. But it's not so obvious uh, until you're out there. Um, when I was in Amtrak, I was reminded that there are people going 160 miles an hour through Michigan on Amtrak, and then they hit northwest Indiana, and they're stopped, or they're going 20 miles an hour. 
So uh, I get the part about getting rid of the low speed rail. So I don't want to diminish your expectations of what we can try to accomplish under this administration. I'm telling you, I'm the only appropriator in Illinois. I'm second ranking Democrat in Congress on the Transportation Approach Committee. I, I want a big infrastructure bill. I want earmarks. I want to be the chairman of that committee and this will be a lot more fun for a meeting. <laughs> we would need a bigger room. And, and that's what I want. I want a bigger room. I, I want this to be the everyday notion of what's taking place. You know, they always think about what's Chicago's congressman's role, right? We think and we hearken back of Dan Rostenkowski, chairman of Ways and Means, driving back resources to the region, right? Yeah, I want to be that guy, right? And I am that guy. I'm in a perfect position to help you and of a mind to help you at the worst possible time. On my first term, we were doing high-speed rail, right? We were in the majority, and Wisconsin turned it away, and we got Wisconsin's money. It would be awesome, right? But I want the whole country to be fighting for it. And if we don't get matching funds straightened out in Illinois, Illinois is going to be turning infrastructure dollars away. So what, what can we do, and what am I going to try to do? I'm going to remind my colleagues that uh, uh, What's really important is transportation that works in the modern age. We're not rebuilding the 19th or 20th century. We're building for the next century and how people are going to get around. And you care about all the things that you care about, getting people around, uh, economic development and growth, climate change, et cetera. You want high-speed rail. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, build appropriations even under the worst of circumstances where they're not particularly <coughs> mindful of high-speed rail, to make what we have work and to get rid of the low-speed rail. Right? I think of 75th Street and what we have to do there with that juncture of all kinds of rail. I think of outside Union Station and Ogilvy where the switching state, for those of you who haven't realized this, when you're on those areas, I just want you to know you are on state-of-the-art switching as designed and installed during the Hoover administration. <laughs> you see, I swear, you see folks out there with blowtorches and, and hammers in the wintertime. You know, I think people who ride those trains are imagining a, a, an army of techies on computers switching this stuff. Not so much. We've got our work cut out for us. Right? The work alone at Union Station and how important that's going to be as we get this X of high-speed rail and move forward. I get the policy stuff. I get what we have to do. What I need, I must, I must talk to dozens of experts in their fields. I, I need you to think like I do from a practical point of view. Um, when I ran and won a special election, I had someone tell me, he says, a, you're a congressman now. You're going to have access to some of the great minds in the world on any field you can imagine, right? And you've got this library, I hear, in Congress. <laughs> and we have experts. We have experts in the Library of Commerce Research Analysis. I could ask them about yak herding in Albania in 1952. And the next day, I would have the yak expert sitting in my office tell me. Mm -hmm. I'm only slightly kidding. We have Nobel laureates calling us. We have groups like yours with all the expertise in the world that call on us. Yet I serve with people who are uh, climate deniers. I serve with people who think that Satan put, uh, I'm not kidding, dinosaur bones in the ground to, to lead us astray. They, they actually say these things. They don't believe in evolution at all, not even within plants. It, it's, we live in a post-science, post-truth, post-intelligence world. This, this impacts how we do things. It is up to us. It is up to you with expertise to share that expertise, to get it in the news, to let people know why this stuff matters. Because right now, we're getting blown off the front pages. And if that's allowed to happen, when the budget times come, when we get past the thin budget, we get this horrible thick budget from hell, it's going to devastate transportation other than whatever little bit it does for roads and bridges, bridges, it's going to be a problem. We all have our work cut out for us. 
If I got a big infrastructure bill, if I had a regular order of process for transportation, highway reauthorization, rail, high-speed rail, and so forth, I, I know what we have to do, but I need your help. We absolutely have to work together to educate the American public about what our dream is, what this country needs to do that it rebuilds itself and reinvents itself. Um, so yeah, it's a distressing time. I was going to try to cheer you up. My staff, my staff said, open with some high-speed rail jokes. I got nothing. But I do appreciate what you do, and I do appreciate the end goal here and what we can try to do, dreaming of what this country can be uh, from any aspect, including how we move people around, how that affects our economy, how it affects our environment, and what it means to each and every single one of us. So um, I plan on doing this. I tr I'm going to do whatever I can with the appropriations we get to spend it as wisely as possible and for now to get rid of the low speed rail and the bottlenecks that exist in the region. And by the way, you are in Chicago. So uh, be mindful who my predecessor was in Congress. That <laughs> apparently he has a new job as uh, you know, mayor of the city of Chicago. So when I say region, he always says, by region, you mean Chicago, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mayor, whatever you say. <laughs> I've learned to say that, too. So I am uh, delighted to be here. It's great to see you all. Uh, please let me know if we can ever help you. Uh, have a great day, and enjoy your lunch. Thank you. <laughs>